Hello, folks. My name is Justin, but my imaginary friends call me Porky of the Pine. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. The smile line. Oh. Uh, my name's Brian, also known by my handle of 33YN2. Yes. And my name is Justin, but all of my imaginary friends call me Porky of the Pine. Now, unfortunately, we were not able to get this episode out on the 15th this month, and from now on, we're most likely going to be releasing about a week or so after the blog posts, because it is just rough on our sanity, and most importantly, our editor's sanity. Editor's note, thank god. Uh, to try to get it out by that 15th deadline, uh, considering when we get a lot of the information that we get. But with all the research that I did for this month, I found out this was actually a huge month on the software end for uh, all of the Pine64 community. Uh, not just the Pine Phone or Pine Time, even um, the Rock Pro 64 and Quartz 64 also had some big news. And let's actually get right into that with the rapid fire news. Our Lord and Savior Meggy has fixed the HDMI hardware bug that plagued many Pine Phone users. This fix is included in his 5.15 kernel. Infinitime 1.7 has released. This update includes motion sensing improvements, which notably allows for a faster wake on lift. The battery percentage is now more accurate and the flashlight brightness can now be changed within the flashlight app. In addition, there is also manual time and date setting now on your Pine Time, which is actually a huge quality of life feature, both that and the flashlight. The Manjaro team showcased the factory Android image running on the Pine Phone Pro. This demonstrates the hardware functionality such as the camera and calls with hardware acceleration. And while it uses an older 4.14 Android kernel, and it does have a lot of proprietary blobs, this does clearly demonstrate that the hardware does work on the PinePhone Pro. The Manjaro team has also shown that the Quartz 64 is now capable of HDMI output with a patched Linux 5.16-RC1 kernel. Megapixels 1.4 has released with flash support with both the LED and display backlight, and also they have fixed a memory leak which was occurring during screen rotation of the device. The YouTube channel MicroLinux has also been posting multiple videos demonstrating PC games running on the Rock Pro 64 using Box86 and Box64. He also just recently tweeted out a picture of Zoom's 32-bit Linux client running on the Pinebook Pro also using Box64, and it runs extremely well. So on to some more meaty information. First, I'll start by saying that a recent video on the Manjaro YouTube channel has shown the snappy performance of the PinePhone Pro. Not only is it extremely smooth, but applications open within a second or two, and the thermals are much better than the original PinePhone, thanks to not exceeding 68 degrees Celsius, whereas the old one could sometimes ex go up to 70 degrees or more. While that's not that hot, you know what is? The keyboard release date has also been finally set. Next month in December, the PinePhone keyboard will finally go on sale for $49.95, plus shipping and taxes, obviously. It would have been released sooner, however, some last-minute changes are being made. The membranes of the keyboard were altered as a result of stiffness being reported in early production samples. Check out the Telegram, Matrix, and Discord announcement channels and watch those like a hawk if you want to get it as soon as it goes on sale, but it should be coming in December for that price, as I mentioned. A good thing to note is that they did a lot of improvements over the time that the keyboard was first announced, so your waiting wasn't in vain. It seems the finish got changed to a new semi-soft coating, which while it has the side effect of attracting fingerprints now, it does feel a lot nicer to hold. They also greatly improved the quality of the keycaps, and the printing on them is now bolder and much more legible. Further, they added a regulator to the circuitry to prevent any kind of electrical problems related to charging, and they raised the pogo pin connectors so that there will always be a solid connection with the pine phone, even if the chassis of the keyboard flexes. And another more subtle but very nice touch is that they changed the color of the membrane. It used to be white, but they changed it to black so that way if you look in between the keys, the black color will blend in better with the keyboard frame. Now I personally can't wait to get my hands on the keyboard, and I know a ton of people in the community have been dying for it for months now. And an article actually came out just recently on XDA developers, which talked about the keyboard and that it would be making both the big and small PB into full-blown miniature computers. But to talk about recent hardware revisions for the original Pine Phone, it seems the eMMC speed is limited by the voltage being supplied for it. So there is now a hardware mod which can be done in conjunction with installing a specific software package on PostMarket OS to boost the speed of the storage from 55 megabytes per second read speed up to 125 megabytes per second. This is obviously a huge improvement and has been proven to decrease the launch times of software on the Pine Phone. Now this improvement might actually hold you over until the PinePhone Pro comes out, though do be aware that you are doing this at your own risk because Pine64 does not take any responsibility for it. 
that storage speed boost is like icing on the cake for the Pine Phone. It does have some issues already with the speed of the RAM and the GPU holding it back, but that is at least usable. You know, it runs fine. One of the biggest issues, though, is that the launch times of applications is just way too slow. And with this mod, it seems like the Pine Phone is actually pretty snappy. It starts applications almost as fast as the Pine Phone Pro. Now, not quite as fast, but still pretty fast. Now, add in some RAM overclocks because that is something you could somewhat easily do. There's instructions on the wiki. And this would be a pretty nice option for those that can't afford to get a Pine Phone Pro or don't want to upgrade to the new one. Now, that said, you would be doing the overclocks and the mod at your own risk, which is, you know, somewhat scary, especially if you can't afford to upgrade to the Pine Phone Pro. That means you can't really afford to lose your Pine Phone as well, which isn't good, obviously. So, you know, hopefully people will go and get it done by somebody that knows what they're doing, is, is very experienced with soldering and can do the mod for them. Or they will hopefully know what they're doing and can do it themselves without any problems. Because like we said, Pine64 does not take responsibility for these mods. If you screw something up, you're, you're shit out of luck. That's it. So maybe in the future they will do a revision though. That would be nice for those that are buying Pine phones in the future, the, the uh, lower end models that are cheaper and add this MMC mod in by default. So that way straight out of the factory, you get the nice snappy launch times of applications. In the UI sphere of the Pine phone, SXMO, the best UI of course, just released version 1.6. This is the highly anticipated update which made the switch to Wayland, which everyone has been calling SWMO. This changes basically every program that has made SXMO what it is. So rather than using DWM, it is now using Sway. Rather than D menu, it's using B menu. Instead of SVKBD, it is now WVKBD. Instead of ST, it's now using Foot. And in addition to those app changes, screen lock and button bindings have been reworked, so if you are an SXMO user, do be sure to check the user guide and see how it's changed, because now instead of, what is it, holding volume up for th a few seconds and then um, that locking and then having to press uh, power three times to unlock, it is now you just press power once to lock. And then you can also toggle if it is a lock with screen on, screen off, and it will automatically go into crust after about eight seconds as long as your phone is not actively doing anything. This update also includes full MMS support. Yes, MMS with Vim. That's it, really in addition to Vim, but there is full MMS support on SXMO. And speaking from experience, this update is huge. It is fast, in my opinion, the PinePhone Pro has basically already come because it is so snappy. Firefox only takes a few seconds to open, and realistically, the hardest thing that I've run into is Discord on Firefox while trying to do anything, which, considering the hardware on the PinePhone, it is not a surprise that that's going to be putting it on its knees. To talk more about the MMS support, it is not just pictures or just receiving pictures, it is full MMS support, so you can send and receive uh, pictures and videos. And now there is also an option to add recipients for a message, so group chats are also fully working. And in my experience with T-Mobile, it was working right out of the box. All I had to do was just reset the configuration for MMSD TNG, and it was just a menu option. It set all the default settings, and it just worked perfectly fine for me. The only downside to this update is that ricing your phone is now considerably more difficult because whereas with X, you could just edit your X resources file and pretty much change all of the colors and um, your X init file would have uh, where you set your wallpaper. Now it is all done through various different configuration files. And be on the lookout from a blog post from me on how to actually do all of the ricing and customizing of SWMO. But speaking of the name SWMO, that is not an official name change. Rather than SXMO standing for Simple X Mobile, from now on the X is going to be really anything you want it to be. Simple Extensible Mobile, Simple Extreme Mobile, Simple Simple Experimental Mobile. And honestly, I think that is a funner and just more interesting name than just kind of a simple X Mobile. Well, with your better UI out of the way, I suppose we can talk about Plasma Mobile a bit. So as many of you may know, Plasma Mobile developers have been working on porting Plasma away from Ophono to Modem Manager like other Linux mobile UIs are already using. 
While it unfortunately will not be ported over until the next major release, the good news is that there's been quite some progress in the dialer and SMS application of Plasma Mobile, which will be coming in that release, obviously. Most notably, Spacebar, the SMS application for Plasma Mobile, now supports MMS and group chats. Additionally, Spacebar will now automatically detect links and SMS authentication tokens, the links sent to your SMS application when you log into a website, giving you a button to quickly copy the information to a clipboard and use that to log in. As for the rest of Plasma Mobile, there's been quite a lot of movement in the shell and KWIN, especially for the next major release. Not only has a completely different home screen layout been added in the form of an application list view, which lists each application by name, but the task switcher has also seen a major redesign with a lot more improvements to come over time. Obviously, these changes won't be making it until the next major release as well, so those improvements will hopefully come during that time, and by the time of release, we'll have all those improvements ready to go, and it will be a really, really sweet upgrade. So when I talked with the developer who was working on these improvements, he mentioned that he hopes to have Plasma Mobile 5.24 in a very stable state by the time it releases, which I think that's something that almost everybody will be excited for, seeing as the fact that Plasma has been notoriously painful to use in the past thanks to all kinds of bugs. You'll use the dialer only to say that it does not detect your, your carrier and will not allow you to place a call, which is a huge issue. You'll use the dialer only to find that it doesn't find your modem. You'll open a web browser and trying to change the resolution of a video only to find that the drop downs are bugged out. The home screen will glitch out in all sorts of fun ways. You'll try and open up an app drawer and it won't open. And then you'll try and swipe down the top status bar only for it to not open. And you have to do it a second time to get it to finally respond. And there's a bunch of more pressing issues as well. So hopefully most of the issues, I'm sure it will not be 100% everything working either because you know this is a big software stack there's a lot of work to do but let's hope that the basic features at least will work well and that people can actually use plasma mobile as a daily driver ui and that further releases going down will only improve the stability and the functionality of it and that will make it a really really nice experience i think so we're on two different ends of the spectrum with uis obviously because you're really you're, you're a big fan of Plasma Mobile, which in my opinion is um, close to a, I don't want to say an Android reskin, but um, it's, it has a very like Android-like feel. And then I'm over here with my wonky, simple UI that you have to learn to actually be able to use. And that's actually something that I, I, just, I wanted to say that's something I actually really like about the Pine Phone, is that you have that range of options. Well, it's funny that you say that, though. Plasma Mobile has actually been using Android concepts in order to make its mock-ups and, and design decisions. They, they see the fact that Google has put a lot of time and, inv and investment into designing their UI so that it's simple for most users to use. And then they, what's great is that they take those ideas and they add more features on top of it. They make it better. They make it more Plasma-y, if that makes sense. They, they give it a nice touch-up to it. So... Yes, you could say it's a clone of Android, I suppose, and it's very similar, but it does have its differences, and that's what makes it nice. For example, if you were to press the power up button or power down, you know, lower or raise the volume on the, on the Pine phone with Plasma Mobile running, it will show you a mobile volume changer UI. And if you either drag or slide, you can change the volume. You can continue pressing the up or down buttons, you know, just like a standard Android phone or anything else. But on top of that, it has a mute button that you could just tap to mute it instantly. And then there's a drop down toggle that if you press that, it gives you the ability to change the volume of your microphone. It gives you the ability to raise and lower the individual volumes of all the applications that are currently running on the phone, which is a huge benefit over Android. And also, the fact that you can multitask is a nice benefit because Android, if you go into another app, then the one that you just open usually goes into a suspend mode. But in Plasma Mobile, that's not how that works, at least for now. I mean, I think they want to eventually implement some kind of suspend, but that's not how it works for now, which I view as a good thing personally. I feel like most people who are daily driving the Pine phone are either like me and using SXMO. Um, I mean, there are a few masochists out there using Plasma Mobile, despite all of the current bugs, but the biggest demographic is probably Fosh, and I have my opinions on Fosh. I really don't like how it looks, um, and I don't like how it feels, but 
again, <laughs> it's just me coming back to, I like that there's such a variety, even looking at things like Nemo and Sailfish and Ubuntu Touch, which those are all in different states of usability. The fact that we have all of those options and the fact that we can experiment with Meggy's multi-boot image where you can just test all of them in one image and sure, they're not all perfectly up to date and there's no way that they can be always perfectly up to date with the rate that a lot of these updates are coming out, but the openness, I mean, it's, it's literally what the entire project is built around. It's just something that's always fascinated me. And it's, it's one thing that I try to brag to people and then they're like, why would I want that when it doesn't work? It's because it's open. It's fun. It's kind of the same way in the desktop world. They see windows as like, you know, why would I go to anything else? I'm playing my games and doing things just fine. But except for the cases where they do have a problem and then they're like, yeah, I want to get rid of windows. But for the most part, most people are just like, well, why would I go want to go to anything else? It's a waste of my time or whatever. They have a very, you know, one-sided view. They don't realize that with Linux, you can choose to customize things however you like. You can run what software you want. And that also, you could tweak things if you wanted to. Like, if you wanted to, you could learn how to contribute to your desktop and add those features that you really, really need and want to it yourself. Or you could even just have somebody else do it, like give the idea to somebody else or pay somebody to do it. You have a whole ton of options in terms of getting those things that you want and customizing it to how you want it to work. And that's something that people just won't get until they try things out. And I think once Linux mobile gets to a state where it's somewhat stable and it's ready for people to just pick up and use, I think that a lot of people will play with it for a few minutes and then start to realize, hey, wait a minute, there's actually quite a bit I could do with this. You're telling me I have like four different choices of UIs to choose from and I can customize things however I want. That's something that Android doesn't quite give you. You, you I mean, sure, it works. But you're kind of forced into, first of all, you're kind of forced into buying a new phone every couple of years because the you know software stops getting updates and then they're like, oh, sorry, you're out of luck. But also, it doesn't allow you to really change how it works or looks. It just is Android. That's it. That's what you get. You could probably use a third-party launcher, for example, but that's almost the extent that you could do because you don't have root permissions on Android and it's not really Linux. It's just kind of sort of a modified, hacked, you know, Google build of Linux with a custom UI on top. And yeah, with that customization, the one thing I, I've seen a few people come into the PinePhone chats asking, how do I start developing for Linux phones? That's, that's something I'm really interested in. And the best advice I've seen is find something you want to change and learn how to make that change. And that's the exact thing that I'm planning on doing whenever I get around to writing SX time utils, which will be a dedicated set of programs and scripts for uh, SXMO to have or to actually work better with InfiniTime and that sort of thing. I know basically nothing about both shell scripting and uh, writing in C. I have written, of course, really simple scripts, but that's the extent of my shell scripting knowledge, really. And I've, I guess I've fixed a few typos and um, I can read a shell script to some extent, but that sort of thing where it's you can learn and I, I, there's that whole mentality you're too smart to learn things and that definitely is very present in tech but for the people who want to learn things linux phones are now there or going to be there and that actually does remind me with the whole idea of um linux phones getting there this past month pretty much every major ui had mms support be added or is getting MMS support added because Plasma Mobile is getting it soon, right? Yeah, it's going to be coming in February. Yeah, so it's coming in February. So right around the time that PinePhone Pro is releasing. SXMO now has MMS support. Chatty Beta at the moment has MMS support, which by the time February rolls around, we're going to have, or Chatty will have probably full MMS support. And so that's the quote unquote big three all having full MMS support. Do you know? Do you have any idea where Ubuntu Touch is in, in their development at all? I just know people use it. They uh, had MMS support, but it was kind of breaking down over time because it wasn't being maintained. And uh, I think the uh, it doesn't work at all on the Pine phone. I haven't tried it, though, like in good two years. So, <laughs> But yeah, again, quote-unquote big three, uh, the main three that most people are talking about. 
they're all going to have MMS support. And that's one of the biggest things that was holding back the Pine Phone from daily drivability for most people is they say, oh, I need MMS support or I need MMS messages regularly for work or something like that. And another thing I actually didn't even mention with SXMO is because of that switch to Wayland, now Wagerwade is available on SXMO. And that's something I really want to take the time to figure out and find out how to get working because I want to know I don't know pretty much anything about uh, Wagerwade except for the fact that it's Wayland Android. It's running it in a container, basically. Yes, running in a container. So uh, it's an Android container um, using Wayland, and that's all I know about it, and I want to find out more about that and actually see uh, to what extent can I use Android apps. Like, I don't know if I can run Discord through Wagerwade yet. You can, but the problem is that it does not have camera support or microphone support or anything like that because unlike where a Hallium kernel, you know, in, in terms of Wagerwide working on it, uh, Ubuntu Touch, for example, it works perfectly there. Cameras and everything was demonstrated, but that's not going to be the case with the Pine Phone just because it doesn't have the same kernel, which would give it hardware access. So Wagerwide on Pine Phone does not have camera access. It does not have microphone access. And... Uh, the most you could really do is just use the internet and use the application connected to the internet and, that, and that's it. Which, something like that, mobile banking, I don't need my camera or my microphone. For most of Discord on the phone, I very rarely am in a voice chat uh, on mobile. Assuming most apps do work, then there we're getting very close to full daily drivability for even a normal person. Because we're not normal. Um, I don't know if that is going to keep that in or not. I know we're still a ways off because right now, I mean, even the SXMO 1.6 update, it it actually was surprisingly smooth, uh, in my opinion, because I there were a few things they said, hey, hold off if you're on edge, and then but by the end of the day, I was able to update it, and the only issue I had was um, my user wasn't added to a group that needed to be used or that needed that it needed to be in for Wayland. Um, but I was able to just use a keyboard and um, log in and fix that. And then it just worked perfectly fine. And now today, uh, as of recording, they just released the final fix that they were trying to do where there is they separated uh, SXMO with DWM and SXMO with Sway into two different packages, but I'm in the boat of having both of them because I never really know when I want to switch back to DWM. But with the current state of it, I am definitely staying with Wayland for the sake of the speed because it is actually unbelievably fast. But going back to the topic of just daily drivability in general, I, I really do think we're close because all they need is, is like a huge Plasma Mobile update that's stable. That's what's shipping on the PinePhone out of the box anyway. So someone with no Linux knowledge can get a PinePhone Pro with Plasma Mobile on it at a stable level and they could actually have a very decent time with it. Sure, it's still not going to be perfect. It's not going to replace an Android phone one-to-one -one or an iPhone, definitely not. But it's still something. And I do I do actually really think, especially with the amount of coverage that the Pinephone Pro got in general, that we are actually going to see a huge influx of new Linux phone users. But it's getting there. I'm excited. Well, even regardless of the fact that the PinePhone Pro or PinePhone OG might never be a device for the masses, it will be a unique device in the fact that the add-ons that you could have on it will be just so varied. And also, add in the fact that this thing's running mainline Linux, unlike any other phone out there, well, except for the original PinePhone and, you know, Libm 5. And that makes it a very interesting device to people, I think. So even if it never gets app support with Wagerroid to a full extent, it will still have some interesting properties that will make people want to get it, I think. So before we keep on rambling for too long, we are going to actually wrap it up here. Let us know what your thoughts are on daily driving the PinePhone, the PinePhone Pro, or just you know, anything we talked about, the UIs in general or the UIs that you like, or how much you think SXMO is better than Plasma Mobile, because it obviously is. Um, no, no shots, to, or that, that wasn't shots fired at the Plasma Mobile devs. You guys are actually doing an amazing job. Um, 
if you have any questions or if you just want to talk to us or get talk to us more about this topic, maybe I said something completely wrong and you want to tell me I'm a terrible person, then you can post in the Pine Talk channel on the Discord server, or you can just DM us directly. My name on both platforms is Porky of the Pine, his is 33YN2, and that's all we have. Till next time.